Commissioner Field, are you ready? I am. Okay. Let's get started. All right, good morning, everybody. Time is now 9.30 a.m. Uh, today's date is February 8, 2022. It is a time and place for our regularly scheduled business meeting. Uh, the commissioners would join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, commissioners. Uh, I would note for the record that uh, we do have quorum this morning. Uh, Vice Chair Johnson, myself, Commissioner Pinochi, Commissioner O'Donnell are present in the Bollinger Room and Commissioner Fielder is participating online. Uh, so we do have quorum. Um, time now for our public comment. Is there anybody who wants to make public comment that's in the room? I'm just getting nothing but head shakes. So no public comment in the room. Uh, is there anybody online that would like to make public comment? Getting head shake on that. So no public comment this morning. There are no changes to the agenda this morning. So we'll move right into our first action item, which is approval of the commission minutes for the week of January 31st, 2022. Uh, Commissioner O'Donnell. Move to accept. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, minutes have been moved and seconded. Discussions or changes to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of Commissioner O'Donnell's motion to approve the minutes for the week of January 31st signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. Seeing no opposition motion carries unanimously. All right, let's move into our work session. Uh, item number one is docket 2020.07.083 Northwestern Energy. Application for authority to adjust the monthly natural gas supply cost rate to make a final decision on Northwestern's application. Mr. Fink, good morning. Good morning, Chair. Commissioners. Included in your packet should be a staff final order on this matter. Sorry, staff a draft final order on this matter. On June 1st, 2021, Northwestern filed its annual application to adjust its unreflected gas cost account balance and its gas transportation adjustment clause balance. The difference between the then currently approved rates and the July 1st, 2021 proposed rates is a decrease for the typical re residential customer using 100 therms per month of $36.23 and 432 dollars $34.76 per year for an overall decrease of 31%. On June 15, 2021, the Commission approved Northwestern's rates on an interim basis and issued procedure orders providing for discovery and the ability to request additional process if necessary on Northwestern's application. The Commission granted intervention to the Montana Consumer Council, who submitted several data requests to Northwestern no party submitted requests for additional process. Staff recommends approval of the draft final order subject to a few additional clerical revisions. Uh, Zach is also online with me today and we're here for any questions. Thank you. All right, uh, is there a motion, Vice Chair Johnson? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we approve staff recommendation including the uh, uh, unspecified clerical changes. <laughs> All right, we have a motion and a second uh, discussion. I'll ask the obvious question, what are the unspecified clerical changes? Mr. Agala. Uh, Chairman, commissioners, uh, good morning. Uh, Commissioner O'Donnell and I had a, a great chat uh, yesterday afternoon on paragraph uh, two, the final sentence uh, is missing either a modifier or it's a wrong tense. It should say on January 10, uh, 2022, the commission received a motion from Northwestern requesting, not requested. And more substantively, uh, paragraph uh, five 
identifies an under collection of $89,000. Paragraph seven identifies an under collection of $117,000. And uh, we fail to include how this $200,000 under collection actually results in a decrease in rates. And that decrease rate is from the high then effective uh, tracker rate in place at the time. So it still results in a decrease in rates, even though there's this $200,000 under collected. Uh, so we're just gonna add in that uh, clarifying couple of sentences to describe why it's overall a decrease to rates. Commissioner O'Donnell, did you wanna weigh in or receive some Congratulations for making those catches. <laughs> no, I uh, uh, thank Mr. Rogala for uh, being as uh, uh, responsive and uh, uh, taking control of the matter uh, expeditiously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Right, Chairman. Additional discussion or questions, Commissioner Fielder? Just, I think for um, staff also um, on the uh, distribution list on the final page, certificate of service, I, I think that needs to be updated I don't believe Robert Nelson is any longer on that, should be on that distribution list since he retired. Just one more detail. Good catch, Commissioner Fielder, thank you. Additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Vice Chair Johnson's motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed signify by saying no. Seeing no opposition, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Fink. All right, work session item number two, which stock at 2021.10.126. This is Montana Dakota Utilities Co. Application to implement a fuel and purchase power cost tracking adjustment for contract service rate 35. We're here to make a final decision on MDU's application. I, Mr. Fink, you're handling this one as well. Correct. Thanks, Chair and Commissioners. On October 29, 2021, Montana Dakota Utilities filed its application with the Commission for its fuel and purchase power cost tracking adjustment pursuant to the terms of its rate 35, a contract rate applicable to one customer, Denbury. On December 20, 2021, the Commission issued a notice of application and intervention deadline, establishing December 31, 2021 as the deadline for intervention. No party petitioned for intervention and no comments have been received regarding MDU's application. On December 29th, 2021, the commission approved MDU's rate 35 tariff on an interim basis, effective January 1st, 2022. MDU requests a 0 0.00186 per kilowatt hour decrease to its current tariff. This proposed rate results in an approximate 392,000 decrease in revenue for 2022. Staff recommends approval and we're available for questions. Is there a motion, Commissioner Pinocci? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we support staff recommendations on this matter. Is there a second, Commissioner O'Donnell? All right, uh, it's been moved and seconded. Discussion, Commissioner O'Donnell? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I just wanted to uh, share my uh, absolute glee in voting for rate reductions. Uh, it uh, makes my heart feel good that that the, it is the um, um, practice of this commission and in, in, in consistency with uh, state law uh, that um, uh, as the costs uh, uh, go up in, in many cases, uh, then the rate would go up and when the costs go down, the rates go down. And I'm uh, very, very pleased that uh, this is uh, lends itself to really, really great transparency, so that the uh, public uh, would know that this is not these rates and the costs are not set on an arbitrary basis, but based upon uh, facts and um, uh, circumstances. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell, Commissioner Pernogi. No comment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Fielder. No comment, Mr. Chairman. All right. Additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of Commissioner Pinocci's motion signify by saying aye. 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 
All those opposed, signify by saying no. Seeing no opposition, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Fink. All right, let's move to work session item number three. This is docket 2020.09.094. This is commission initiated. This is the commission investigation of North Star to provide an update on the status of North Star water and sewer. Uh, Mr. Fink, you're busy this morning. Yes, thank you, Chair, Commissioners. So North Star provided us with its January update. Um, just do a brief summarization of that update. Uh, Tyler Stuck with Rocky Mountain Operators provided an overview with the pumps associated with North Star water system. Um, there are three emergency pumps located near the bottom of the storage tank that are for emergency use only. They have been tested and are in properly working order. There are two distribution pumps with intakes that sit just below the halfway mark of the storage tank. Uh, Rocky Mountain Operators has a replacement on hand for these. Um, there are six submersible well pumps located in the well casings of North Star's six wells. Out of these six pumps, they are aware of their operational statuses and appears to either have a backup pump on hand or can easily obtain one in town. Uh, Rocky Mountain Operators has completed a review and analysis of the water system and identified the work that needs to be done prior to the watering season has already completed most of the work that needs to be, that needs to be completed. <clears throat> In regards to the registers, Rocky Mountain Operators still expects to have the faulty register replacements completed by the start of 2022 irrigation season. Due to the previous water supply issues, Rocky Mountain Operators has plans of how it will implement a watering schedule and invite the PSC staff to meet further to discuss this matter. With this being said, in light of the upcoming watering season and to be proactive with the investigation, staff has come up with a few ideas that would be prudent for the utility to consider before this year's watering season. Therefore, in addition to Rocky Mountain Operators watering schedule plans, staff proposes to ask the following questions and have Rocky Mountain Operators reply back to the commission with our next update in March. Uh, here are the questions. What will trigger an odd even watering day restriction? What would trigger a no watering day restriction? or no watering restriction. If a restriction is implemented, how does North Star plan to effectively communicate with its customers? Does North Star plan to use ARM 38.5.2505 if a customer violates a watering restriction? With that being said, staff's available for questions and we believe we're in a good place going forward in March with the parties. Thank you, Mr. Fink, Vice Chair Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I suppose uh, we should all have these uh, arm citations memorized, but I don't. Um, that uh, citation uh, in your questions refers to specifically which rule, Mr. Fink? But Vice Chair Johnson, it refers to the discontinuance of notice. I um, want to be sure of that. I, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Fink, I appreciate um, <clears throat> the uh, staff uh, taking this proactive stance. Uh, I'll be anxious to uh, see those responses next month. Um, <clears throat> we are uh, heading uh, quickly towards the uh, irrigation uh, season. What, what are what staff looking at is defining the beginning of that, that season? What, how much time do we have left to, uh, to fine tune this um, uh, set of controls uh, for the uh, uh, irrigation season? Chair Brown, Vice Chair Johnson, um, typically the irrigation starts, Zach can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, in April, late, later April, June 1st, if I'm not mistaken. So that would give us about two and a half months to fine tune this. All right, uh, Mr. Chairman, one more if I'm yeah, right. follow up. Just uh, uh, want to uh, uh, again thank you and staff for your approach to this. I would encourage you to uh, share with the other parties uh, the, uh, the intensity of our commitment to see this situation handled in uh, an effective manner before the onset of, of, of this uh, irrigating season. We, we appreciate uh, the other parties' involvement, but let's make sure that all of us understand the tremendous importance of having this done and done correctly before we turn the spigots on in the spring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, Commissioner O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just some points to bring up for further discussion with with, uh, on, with the uh, operators of this. Uh, Section eight of the uh, Tyler Stucks uh, memo talks about uh, that it's not common practice to keep a pump on hand because the seals can dry out. Uh, and yet for uh, pump number six, RMO has an on-site backup replacement pump for this pump stored at the utility pump house, being that that is, um, I understand the smaller pumps are easily accessible. You just go to go to Lowe's and get one, okay? Um, and if all else fails, they go to Home Depot, but, you know, joke. Um, but the, the 20 horsepower motor is something that you can't just pick up at, at the nearest store. So they have to have it on hand. What I'm wondering about is it, it would be a good question for staff to ask, what are they doing that that pump is going, that that uh, 20 horsepower uh, pump is going to be uh, um, able to be put into service at the time? Being that they pointed out that storing is is not is not effective it just seems like there's a there's a contradiction uh, right there um i you know mr stuck points out that he's been uh, quote i have served as the manager of this business under its current or former name since 2015. Uh, we have expressed before our incredible ongoing frustration with this issue um the fact that it has come to this point that this commission has taken such a, a hands-on approach to this whole thing, to me is almost intolerable. Uh, I question at this point, the uh, uh, basically the competency of uh, the operator of that system. Uh, when they say that uh, they identified, I think it was five customers that use over 100,000 gallons a month, and they said that they are planning on talking to this person to find out something. Uh, and that should have been something that they did a long time ago. Uh, it, 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 it almost seems to me that this company is responsive only to initiatives to pressure put on by this commission and not really taking care of the business on behalf of their, their, uh, their uh, uh, users right there who are utterly and totally and completely dependent upon adequate supplies of water for personal use, not just irrigation, but personal use. Uh, I, I just, I see nothing here that, uh, that convinces me that the company has really uh, stepped up to take advantage of this situation, to keep this from recurring for residents and, and uh, bothering us with having you spend all this time on this, so Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Panoji. What we've done when we put a pump in storage is that it's clearly marked under warranty until such time we use it. And most pumps that are bought could be stored for years um, at the dealership, depending on the popularity of the pump. Um, and a Grunfoss German pump the hundreds we've installed um, putting in wells between Lincoln and Great Falls. We've never had a seal failure that I know of yet. So I think that's pretty rare. Um, and those pumps are designed to last for 20 years. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Pinochi. Commissioner Field, or any comment? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a, a question, first of all, that maybe Mr. Fink can help me to understand. And it it has to do with this double negative that's in a few of the explanations on the um, the explanation of the water pumps themselves. And I actually appreciated the, the detailed explanation of each pump and which ones have backups and what sizes they are and, and the, the status of those being checked. I thought that was actually very responsive to our comments we made last, uh, last month. But there's, um, there's a sentence that's used a number of times. I think the first time it's used is um, in uh, it's section number th number three, his first document that's attached, Tyler Stuck's first document that's attached. So number three, and then letter C, and then I I, 
and it's the final sentence of I, I, and the final sentence, sentence of I, 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 and the final sentence of I, V, which Roman numeral two, three, and four. And, and the sentence is, we do not believe it is not larger than well pump number five. And I'm having trouble figuring out exactly what he's saying there. Does that mean they think it is bigger than well pump number five? Do you have any idea, Mr. Fink, on what is actually meant by that sentence? Chair Brown, Commissioner Fielder, um, just based off my own opinion, it's, it's I just the way I interpret it is uh, it's not larger than than the previous well or the pump. So, uh, to my knowledge, they're saying that they're able to easily access a pump for that pump based off it's not greater than the previous pump. Okay, well, if you would, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Fink, if we could just get clarification on that, maybe rephrase that sentence uh, for future reports or make a correction to this one, that would be great so that, that it's clear what, what is intended by that meaning there. And um, uh, as far as the pump report, um, I, another question I had, Mr. Chairman, was uh, the mention of the registers that were on back order. And Mr. Fink, do we have any idea when those were actually ordered and what the prognosis is? They say that they believe they're going to still get things done. Um, but I'm just wondering how proactive has the company been in getting those ordered? Do we have any sense of dates? Were they ordered and how long they've been waiting? Is it truly no fault of their own or did they delay getting these ordered? Do they have a backup plan in case those don't come in? Chair Brown, Commissioner Fielder, we have no, none of that information. Um, the only information that we have is what they provided in that report in saying that there were some delays in acquiring those pumps with the orders and they still expect to have them completed by the watering season. Okay. Um, yeah, if we could, if we could elicit more information, I know Mr. Stuck offered to meet with staff anytime. So if you could just, for me, get those two clarifications on the, his first document, that would be wonderful. And in regards to the second document that he submitted concerning surcharge rate for peak water use, I'll just um, reserve my comments on that for another time. All right. Anything else, Commissioner Fielder? No, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Commissioner Pernucci, I saw you. Commissioner Pernucci. I'll shed a little light on answering those questions. When a water drill driller drills as well and he hits water, he's able to pump out water and measure how many gallons a minute he can get. A low yield well, a well could be six, seven gallons a minute. A high yield well could be a hundred gallons a minute. That information is extremely important because you pick the pump that fits the yield of the well. If we put a 100 gallon a minute pump in a well that only produces seven gallons a minute, uh, when you drill a well 100 feet deep, the pump is about 15 feet above that. If we have too big of a pump, it'll suck the gravel right out of the ground and bury the pump and gravel. Then the well driller has to come back, pull the line in the pump, redrill the well, clean it out. So sizing the pump to the yield of the well is imperative. All these records are on file for each individual well, and the pump is important to match that. That is why you have to have so many different kinds of pump on hand, in stock, and sometimes uh, you have to wait two or three months to get one. Sometimes you got to wait two weeks. In the meantime, nobody has water in that well. And that's the idea of a backup pump on hand all the time for each well and each pump that is used in the system. Thank you. Additional comments, questions? I have one real quick question, Mr. Fink. Uh, I noticed in the material provided to us, <clears throat> a gentleman by the name of Doug Boot Boutelier, maybe Boutelier. Uh, submitted an affidavit that laid out some proposed tariffs, and this is the first time I can recall seeing Mr. Boudelier's name. Um, do you know what capacity he serves North Star by any chance, or could we find out that information? If you don't know, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> Chair Brown, I 
Zach, do you know if he's <clears throat> what is recollection? What what is correlation is? Uh, Chair Brown, I don't know who this is, but yeah, we'll we'll follow up and figure out what their relationship is to North Star. Thank you. I'm appreciating know, knowing what authority he has to propose tariff rates. Mr. Agal, thank you. Additional discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Fink. All right, let's move it to work session item number four, which is docket 2021.09.118, Northwestern Energy. Uh, petition for rulemaking to incorporate FERC's rule allowing variable cost of energy rates under PURPA. Uh, we're here to consider convening roundtable discussions with interested parties. Mr. Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, it is perhaps no surprise to anyone in the room that our PURPA rules are a bit out of date. Uh, they were first adopted in 1981. Many have not been touched since 1981. Northwestern Energy in their petition for rulemaking has highlighted one area where the commission's rules are no longer fully in line with what FERC would allow and has requested the commission update those rules uh, accordingly. However, upon review of the full set of 10 rules that the commission has, even adopting Northwestern's request would leave many aspects of our rules out of date or at least in conflict with existing FERC rules. So staff recommends convening a, a round table, one or more round tables, depending on parties availability to, to address all the rules at one time. And what I mean by one time is having a discussion that's holistic and addresses all 10 rules, even though it may not result in a single notice of proposed rulemaking. Um, I, I think that through this discussion process, we can identify essentially three different types of, of rulemaking that the commission may, may wanna consider here in the near future. First is the clearly uncontested issues. And there should be several of those, uh, those opportunities for uncontested provisions to our rules. Uh, for example, uh, our definition section, when first adopted, incorporated a lot of the then existing language from FERC rules. Um, it, did, it did so by just repeating the language verbatim. Uh, of course, the FERC definitions have changed somewhat over the years, and so those definitions in our rules are no longer correct. Uh, we can hopefully have consensus uh, with the idea of, instead of repeating the language entirely, just referring to the federal rules where they're defined uh, so that we can more seamlessly update those as FERC changes its definitions. Uh, and there are a lot of opportunities for the commission to do that throughout its PURPA rules. In your meeting materials today is a red line of the full set of PURPA rules that staff has prepared, not as a suggestion that necessarily meets with staff's approval, and certainly we would not ask the commission to approve that red line as a starting point for rulemaking, rather to show you how the rubber can meet the road here, how we can, we can change those rules to more seamlessly incorporate the federal definitions and the federal standards that this commission is charged with, with implementing here in Montana. Um, so, th so the first silo of potential rulemaking is the clearly uncontested issues that I believe we could identify and then change with a very quick rulemaking process, potentially one that doesn't even contemplate a public hearing to get it done uh, if, if it's just so straightforward. The second possibility for, for a notice of proposed rulemaking are those issues that are contested enough to, to require a hearing for rulemaking, but are also simple enough uh, for, for, for the, the rule to be drafted and to be presented in a quick fashion. Uh, some of these, these changes are likely to be opposed by the Northwestern or the QFs, uh, but they are also understandable. Uh, we, can, we can clearly condense them in rule format and move forward with them without wasting too much time on trying to iron out language with the parties beforehand. Uh, we, we do anticipate that those will be hotly contested through rulemaking, but we also anticipate that we can address them with some degree of expediency. The third uh, category of potential rules here are those that are contested and also complex or, or novel, something beyond what, what you know, we've, we've dealt with either through Northwestern's petition or through discussions informally with parties and with staff to, to generate new ideas for how to deal with these rules. Those that are complex or novel may require more time to fully develop. And, and so that silo of rulemaking may take more time to present to the commission. 
the goal here, though, in having the rulemaking roundtable and in dividing the rules in this way is to get some changes in place as quickly as possible. We all know that the commission spends a considerable, considerable amount of time and energy, both from commissioners and from staff, in order to, to work through these QF issues. So if there are ways that we can improve that process through rulemaking, it's important for us to move quickly on those. Uh, it's also important for the commission to be able to make its case, as the commission may decide, whatever its position would be, uh, to the FERC about the status of FERC's rules and about preservation of recent rulemaking, if that is the commissioner's desire. And it helps us to be able to have rulemaking underway, if not all the way complete, in order to make that case to FERC. So in summary, staff does recommend beginning this roundtable discussion. Uh, I think that we can we can make a lot of progress with having just an informal chat with, with parties who are interested in the subject matter. And then we will come back to the commission later this month, potentially early next month, depending on uh, parties' availability, to, to lay out one, maybe two of those notices of proposed rulemaking to move this process forward. Uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Is there a motion, Vice Chair Johnson? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we direct staff to convene one or more roundtable discussions about the revisions of the commission's PURPA rules, including the revisions proposed in the Northwestern, in Northwestern's uh, petition and uh, its responsive comments. Uh, if there's a second, Mr. Chairman, then I'd like to briefly open. I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. All right, Commissioner Fielder is seconded, Vice Chair Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to uh, point out that uh, uh, the recent revision of PURPA rules on the part of FERC uh, do provide uh, the potential for some relief of the regulatory burden that uh, uh, is shouldered by the commission in, in this area. Uh, and we have been specifically requested by a FERC commissioner to submit uh, uh, written statements to him with regard to why we want to see those recent revisions preserved. Uh, so time is of uh, some essence here. And I think that uh, um, Mr. Hamilton and staff have come up with uh, uh, a very solid approach to this and uh, would hope that uh, uh, all four of my colleagues would uh, uh, support that approach. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Commissioner O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I uh, quite agree that uh, uh, encourage staff to be expeditious as possible, but in an informal way. I don't. That's a balance uh, type of thing. You can't really push it and get uh, an inferior product uh, by pushing it uh, too hard, too fast. Uh, but uh, I wanted to express my appreciation uh, to staff for uh, especially. Uh, Mr. Hamilton, uh, for being on top of this and making sure that uh, uh, our uh, rules are consistent with the authority that we operate under, which is FERC on here. I would also like to say that we, in terms of the definitions on there, for a layperson reading these, I think it would be good to have the language on there, but to have a little caveat on there that says, says uh, something like, but in all cases, the def FERC's definition will will prevail on all these things. But uh, I think for people reading it so they don't have to go back and forth to federal law, just for transparency uh, uh, sake, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Additional discussion? Uh, I would just repeat the admonition that uh, Vice Chair uh, Johnson stated is that I think this is a matter that is towards the top of the uh, commission's priority list. And so with that uh, suggestion, I would, uh, I appreciated your comments about the quick time frame for uh, turning this matter around and bring it before the commission again, Mr. Hamilton. Additional discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the vice chair's motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Seeing none, motion carries unanimously. All right, a uh, bit of housekeeping here. Um, our next commission business meeting will not be Tuesday, February 15th. Um, 
We have canceled that business meeting. Uh, some of us will be attending the NAROC meeting during that period. So our next commission business meeting will actually be February 22nd, 2022. Uh, it'll be in the afternoon. So uh, the public is aware of that. Uh, seeing no further business, the time is now 10.05 a.m., Commissioner O'Donnell, and I will adjourn this meeting. <laughs>